I am so glad that you are here to worship God alongside me today. We are here to come so close to God and to feel God coming so close to us that we feel God's love and we feel God's peace. And we also feel the courage and the hope that God gives us. It's an amazing thing. So I am glad that you are here. I have an important question for you. Are you ready? Are you ready for worship today? Can you show me what it looks like to be ready in your bodies? You can find a nice, comfortable position. And I like to take a deep breath. So I feel ready all through my body. And I remember that God is as close to me as the breath I breathe. And that every breath I breathe is a gift from God. So are you ready? If you are, then we can begin. And I will say, the Lord be with you. I love it when you say, and also with you, that we were sharing God's blessing together. Now, you know that we are here to listen for God, to see what God is telling us through God's stories. And we're also here to talk to God. And we can do that in lots of different ways and wherever we are. Let's do it with our singing voices today. Father, we adore you and we lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you and we lay our lives before you. How we that singing too. Can you see what I have here? I have our calendar. This is one of the ways the church tells time. Now the church uses regular clocks and regular calendars as well, but this one is special. You can see this one is a different shape from the calendars that you usually see hanging on the wall. What shape is this? This is a circle, and this reminds us that for every beginning, there is an ending, and every ending, there is a beginning on and on and on. And there's something else that's different about this calendar. It has colors. Do you see all the different colors there are? The church uses colors to tell time. Isn't that interesting and beautiful? Right now, we are in the time of the color. There are clues around you, do you know? We're in the time of the color green. We have been in green for a really, really, really long time. There are lots of good things that happen in the color green. This is when summer starts and when you can jump around in sprinklers and maybe go on hikes with your family and this is the rest of the summer here, and then when it starts getting a little bit cooler, like we feel right now, and the leaves start falling from the trees and go crisply crackly under your feet, then we're getting into fall, and we're still in green, then the time changes and it gets dark early, that's happening soon, and then just when it seems that the night will go on forever and green will go on forever. We get ready to celebrate the light of the world. We get ready to change our colors here in our time of preparation for Christmas. So you can see we're getting really close to the time of the color purple. I am so excited for that. I'm excited to change the colors and get ready for Christmas. Are you excited for that too? I hope so. That's a really fun time. I look forward to journeying to Bethlehem with you. 
during this time. Now this is something that you see right in front of you that you've been seeing for a while now, but there's something in front of, well, there's something that's not in front of me right now that we've had for the past few weeks. What do we not have? What is not here that has been here? Can you tell? Do you remember? There's no desert. There's no desert in this story. Now that's a big change. We've been in the desert for a long time. But this is a story about when the people of God come out of the desert. Are you ready for that? I'm excited to tell you that story. If you're ready, go and tend to Jared. The people of God came out of the desert, out of the wilderness where they had been for so long, and they came into the promised land. God led them into this land that was so beautiful and so perfect for them. God had promised that they could live here, and they did. When David became king, he gathered up the people from the north and the south and brought them together into one group. Then he took the city of Jerusalem from the Jebusites and called it the city of David. And the people began to live there and they loved it there. But there was something missing. Something the people loved so much that they wanted to have with them everywhere, everywhere they were. They wanted this with them. But it wasn't there in Jerusalem. What was it? What was missing? Do you know? What did the people love and carry with them everywhere they went? The ark, the ark was missing. Oh no, David went with his army to go and get the ark and bring it back to Jerusalem. And when David and his army brought the ark that the people loved so much back to Jerusalem, David danced before the ark as it came into the city, as they brought it in. He danced for joy, he was so happy. The ark, the ark was back. The ark that contained the 10 best ways to live. The people were so glad. And they built the tent of meeting around the ark like they had in the wilderness, in the desert. Just like we did last week, do you remember? When we built the tent? David looked at the tent and thought, God should have a house, a beautiful house too. I have a beautiful house. The people of God are living in nice houses in Jerusalem. God should have a house too, not just a tent. But God said, no. David, your son will build a house for me, will build a temple. After David died, David's son Solomon became king, and he began to build the temple. They kept the ark in a safe place while they were building. All the people needed to help. It was a big job. Some people went to the north, to Lebanon, and they cut down the big, big cedar trees that were there, some of them, and brought them back to Jerusalem. And some people went to the mountains and hills nearby, and cut stone from them and brought stone back to Jerusalem. And they got the stone and the wood ready to begin to build. The people watched and helped and the temple began to grow and got bigger and bigger. It was amazing. The people could not believe how beautiful there was carved olive wood and gold. There was a big room, a place of meeting where people could come close to God. And there was a special room too. And only the ark would be in here. It was called 
the Holy of Holies. There were the same things inside the temple as had been inside the tent to help people get ready to come close to God. There was the altar of incense. And when the incense was burning, a fragrant cloud of smoke would fill the whole temple. It would smell so good. And it would help people get ready to come close to God. It also reminded them of when God's presence led them in a cloud of smoke. There was also the table with 12 pieces of bread, one piece for each of the tribes of Israel. And there was the special lampstand with seven branches. Do you remember what this is called? A menorah, exactly. The first day that the priests brought the ark into the temple and put it in its special, special place, the Holy of Holies, a cloud of dazzling light filled the temple. God was there. Now only the high priest, one person, could go into this special place, the Holy of Holies, to be near the ark and only on one day of the year, called the Day of Atonement, the most special day for the people of God. And Jewish people have just observed this day a few weeks ago. They still do that and remember coming close to the ark. In front of the temple, there was the altar, but it was bigger than the one in front of the tent. This was the place where people would leave gifts for God. And there was a big bowl of water for washing, the laver. This was there in front of the tent too, but this one was bigger. The temple was magnificent was almost finished. One more thing. A roof on top. Not just the pieces of cloth, but an actual roof. When everything was ready, everything was complete, Solomon gathered the people around. And Solomon asked God's blessing on this temple. He said a special prayer. O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. But will God indeed live on the earth? Heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have built. Yet listen to the prayer of your servant and to the things I am asking you, said Solomon. Solomon prayed that God would be close to this temple, that God's name, that God's presence would live here and that the people could come here to come close to God and to worship God and to seek justice. King Solomon was a very wise king. Some people say the wisest person who ever lived. King David was known for his beautiful songs, his poetry and his battles. Solomon, King Solomon, was known for his wisdom and for building the temple. King Solomon reigned for 40 years, and when he died, he was buried in Jerusalem, where his father, King David, was also buried. And then King Solomon's son became king over the people of God. Now, I 
wonder which part of this story you like the best. What's your favorite part? Which part is most important? What is the most important part of this story? I wonder where you are in the story or what tells something about you. I wonder if there is a part of this story that we could take away but still have all the story that we need. What a special story. The people of God love the temple very much. I hope you enjoyed this story too. I would like to lead us in a time of prayer where we will be talking to God and we can do it just using our regular talking voices, like I am right now. God, thank you so much that you are always with us. Wherever we go, wherever we are, whatever is happening in the world or in our lives, you are with us everywhere, not just in one place, everywhere. God, you are so... God, thank you for us. God, please. Jesus, you came to be God with us, to show us how to live and to bring God's love to us. You taught us so many things. One of them is how we should pray. We want to say your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. God bless you. This story comes from the Bible from the book of 2 Kings 5 to 8, and also 2 Chronicles 2 through 8. There's a lot of building, so there's a lot of verses about the temple. And this particular telling of this story is called The Ark and the Temple from Godly Play, Volume 2, by Jerome Berryman. I hope you enjoyed this story. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.